Hey, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White. Today, I'm going to discuss how you can use Document Builder with documents that contain numbered lists. Numbering in OpenXML word processing ML is probably the most complicated feature of the entire markup language. This is because of the extensive capabilities of numbered lists in OpenXML word processing ML. You can have simple numbered lists, you can have bulleted lists, you can have hierarchical numbered lists where items at the top level of the hierarchy are numbered with one, two, three, and the next level down are numbered with 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. In addition, you can associate numbering with styles. And if you do so, for instance, with the heading styles, then all of the paragraphs that are styled with heading one are numbered as one, two, three, and so on. All of the paragraphs that are styled as heading two are numbered as 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 and so on. When I originally designed Document Builder, I didn't pay that much attention. I didn't pay enough attention to numbered lists. The very first version simply took items that had the same abstract list number and effectively merged them into the same numbered list. And this was not right at all. I received complaints straight away about that situation. And so I took the approach that when you're merging two different documents, each numbered list from each document becomes a separate abstract list in the resulting document. If you need a refresher on numbered lists, take a look at this screencast. It goes through OpenXML numbering in quite a lot of detail. In addition, if you want to get the complete definitive answer on how OpenXML numbering works, you can go to this article on MSDN. It defines in excruciating detail exactly how numbering works in OpenXML word processing ML. There is a scenario where correctly merging numbered lists is important when using Document Builder. Let's take a look at a couple of documents. Here we have a document. It is the first chapter in a book, and it has chapter one, overview, 1.1, 1 .1, intro to the chapter. This paragraph here is styled as heading one. This is styled as heading two. This is styled as heading three, and so on. Here, this is again styled as heading two. This is styled as heading three. And we have another document here. Again, same situation. This is styled as heading one, this is styled as heading two, and this is styled as heading three. And what we want this to look like when we get all done is something like this, where we have chapter one, this is styled as heading one, it has this intro to the chapter, and that's styled as heading two. And when we drop down here further, we finally get to chapter two. Again, this is styled as heading one, and here, 2.1 is styled as heading 2, and so on. These are styled as heading 3. Well, as it turns out, we can use the stock version of Document Builder in order to accomplish this. So let's first go take a look at how this markup is set up, and then see how we can make a little document builder example that does what we want it to do. I'll look at one of these documents, this source1.docx in the OpenXML package editor power tool in Visual Studio 2010. When we look at the main document part, what we see is it looks just like plain old ordinary word processing ML. We can't see any evidence of the numbering in the main document part. Here is the paragraph that is styled as heading one. 
here is a paragraph styled as heading two, and so on. Where we find the markup that leads to the numbering is in the styles part. Let's take a look at that. Here is the heading one style, and in the paragraph properties, there is this num PR element in the paragraph properties, and it has a num ID with a value of one. Now let's go look in the numbering definitions part. First we go to the bottom of the file, and we can see here is that w colon num that is referred to by that heading one style. It has a num ID of one. This num ID of one corresponds to this num ID of one right here. And this then points at an abstract num ID with a value of one. So let's go up to the beginning of the document. I'll collapse that abstract num and get down to this one. And this is the abstract num that is associated with heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on. One point to keep in mind here is that the way that open XML numbering works is that it doesn't really matter what the w colon num is. What really matters is what is the abstract num. So you could, for instance, have two lists, and each list has their own w colon num down here, and yet if they both referred to the same abstract num, they would be part of the same numbered list. That's just the way that open XML word processing ML works. There are some scenarios where that's pretty important. We don't have to really delve into that today. Today what we're really interested in is this little job of going in and merging these two documents in such a way that numbering is set up properly when we're all done. So the strategy that we're going to take here is that first we're going to remove the numbering from the heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on styles. We're going to remove that numpr element from all of our heading styles. This then will remove numbering from all of our source documents. After we do that, we're going to use Document Builder to merge them in the normal way. After we merge them in the normal way, we are then going to go back in and add numbering back into the merged document. So let's take this a step at a time. Here's our example program, and in, at the top of this example program, I've defined a few constants where the various documents will reside. First of all, there's a string that is set to the location of the source one and source two documents. And then the next is I set up the strings that contain the location where I'm going to put those same documents that have no numbering. Next, I'm going to define what the merged document is going to be. It's going to be in dot dot slash dot dot slash merged dot docx. And this document will have no numbering. And then finally, I'm going to put numbering back in and the resulting document will be merged and numbered dot docx. So the first thing that this code does is it sets up the file infos for the source one and source two and no numbering one and two. It then copies source one and source two to the no numbering location and then it calls this method remove heading numbering. Let's go take a look at that method. It's a super simple method. All it does is it opens up the document. It then gets the styles definition part. It then gets a list of all the styles to modify, and you can see here that the where clause in this query looks for all the styles that have a style ID that starts with heading, and every style ID has a length of eight. In other words, it's going to be heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on. And last, 
the last character of that style name is going to be a digit. This will give us the list of the styles heading one through heading nine. Then this code iterates through each one of those styles, goes in, finds that numpr element, and removes it. So let's run this little program. All this one does is take out the numbering. Let's look at source one, no numbering. And sure enough, the numbering has been removed from this document. The next thing that this document does is it uses Document Builder in just about the simplest possible way to get those two source documents, the ones without the numbering, and merge them into a new merged document. Let's look at the merged document. Here it is. So sure enough, there is the heading one. Down here is heading one again for the second chapter. And finally, last but not least, it copies this merged document to the merged and numbered name, and then it goes in and adds the heading numbering back into the document. Let's take a look at that code. This code is a little bit more complex because it has to deal with the situation where there might be a numbering part already in the merged document, or there might not. The first thing that this code does is determine what the next abstract num ID is. This is the next available abstract num ID, and it sets it to zero right here. It then gets the numbering part, and if the numbering part is not null, then it does a query, finds all of the abstract num IDs, gets the maximum one of those values, and then adds one to it. And here, the code does the exact same thing with the num ID. In other words, we need a free abstract num ID, and we need a free num ID that is not going to conflict with any existing abstract nums and nums in the existing document, in the newly merged document. Finally, it comes down here, and if there is no numbering part, then it adds it. Now, here is one of my favorite approaches to fabricating a bunch of OpenXML markup. What I actually did in this situation is I went in to my numbering part after I had set up my document the way I wanted it to be, and I grabbed the abstract num markup in the Visual Studio XML editor. I replaced all the double quotes with single quotes so that I could put them into one of these at strings, the multi-line strings that C Sharp allows. And you'll also see that I was able to go in and put one of the curly brace, zero curly brace things in there so that I can use string.format and combine this with the abstract num ID to get the exact markup that we want. You'll notice, of course, this XML that's in string form has to have this namespace declaration in there. Otherwise, it's not valid XML, and we're calling xElement.parse on this. So we need that namespace declaration to be in there. But what you'll notice then is if you don't do anything different, then you'll end up with multiple namespace declarations in the main document part. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little messy. So what I do is after doing the parsing, I get rid of the extraneous namespace declaration. I do this just to make my XML neat. Sometimes I, I'm a little bit of a stickler for that. And here we do the exact same thing for the numbering definition. So 
The abstract num definition, that's the abstract number XML that we want in our numbering part. And this num def, this is the new w colon num that we want in our numbering part. And also, I want to set up the XML so that it looks exactly as it should. I want it to look just as though Word generated this XML. So what I do is I look for the last abstract num in the numbering document. And if there is one, then it adds this new abstract numbering definition after the last one in the document. And if there isn't one, in, for instance, the case where there wasn't a numbering part in the document, then it just adds the abstract numbering definition to the root of the numbering part. And it does the exact same thing to put in the w colon num into the numbering part. And at that point, we're done. We've put together our new numbering part. And the next thing that it needs to do is it needs to add a new numpr to all of the relevant styles. The code gets the X document for the style definitions part. Again, it gets the exact same list of styles here. This query is exactly the same as the query we discussed earlier. And finally, it iterates through all of those styles, adding the new numpr to the PPR element. One thing you'll notice is for heading one, you'll see there's this w colon numpr with a num id. If we go to heading two, we'll see our numpr right here. And you will also see this ilvl with a value of one. Well, there really is effectively an ilvl of a value of zero right here. This would give us the exact same results. So when I generate the XML to go in to this styles part, I calculate that ILVL. I don't bother to not include the ILVL in the case of heading one where the ILVL is set to zero. That's a pretty minor little thing. It doesn't really matter. And we're done. At that point in time, we can put the styles definition part back into the document and we're done running the program. And so when we finally run it, we look at the merged and numbered document and we can see what we wanted to see. This is what we wanted our document to look like. Key point here is it's kind of a non-starter to try to have document builder merge numbered lists. If you've got a particular numbered list that you want to create from multiple sources, in other words, you're pulling in multiple sources from document builder, then the easiest thing to do is to remove the numbering from the document before you do the merging merge the documents, and then go in and add the numbering back in. Sometimes you might need to go in and do a little bit of annotation so that you know how to put the numbering back in. In this particular case, we have a very easy way to know where to put the numbering back in. We're putting it back into all of the heading styles. But if you are in the situation where you're trying to merge multiple sources and you're not using the case where you're looking at the heading styles, what you might do is remove the numbering from your source documents and simultaneously add something like field codes back into your source documents. Those field codes will be merged by Document Builder quite adequately. And then you can go in after the fact and look for those field codes and add your numbering back in. You could use field codes, you could use comments, you could put in special bookmarks that would define exactly the place where you need to put numbering back in. Actually, I think putting bookmarks into the document and then using that to trigger where to put numbering back into the document, that's the easiest way to go about this. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.